welcome back uh, today I wanted to update uh, the video so this is going to be a part two of uh, the one I made because I had to do some updates on my GPIO pins and do some more troubleshooting of course because it's Modbus so one important detail about uh, ESP8266 is that the pin labels uh, on the silk screen often don't correspond directly to the GPIO numbers so for instance the D1 is actually a GPIO5 and D2 is GPIO4. The distinction matters when choosing pins for stable uh, operation. Certain pins have special functions and uh, states at boot, for example. GPIO0 and GPIO15 can prevent ESP8266 from uh, booting if pulled incorrectly. It's important to think about. GPIO1 and GPIO3, they I, the ones that I had as uh, RX and TX pins, uh, they're high, it's a high signal at boot, which can interfere with uh, peripherals like relays. I mean, uh, I had uh, TX and RX on GPIO1 uh, and 3, and uh, I couldn't get the Modbus to work. After analyzing the behavior of uh, the pins, I updated my code to use GPIO 12 as TX and GPIO 13 for RX in the UR communication. These pins are stable and free from boot related issues. This is a part two because when I did the first video, I had not yet received my uh, TTL to RS45 converter and uh, I uh, I took delivery of that module uh, yesterday morning and all day yesterday I was struggling to get it to work um, now this morning right before I made this video I managed to get everything up and running um, one crucial detail about this specific car the XY45 the wiring is that uh, this one requires RXD from the module to RX on ESP8266. So TXD to TX. Usually it's the opposite way around, but on this module uh, that was the case. That was not was what was hindering me from getting this to work. Um, but I will get into that a little bit later. So my uh, UART configuration in the code, as you can see now, is um, where did I put it? It's here. TX pin is now configured on GPIO 12 and RX pin is configured on GPIO 13. If your pins are misconfigured, you may experience communications, uh, communication errors or no data at all. Um, as a Modbus, Modbus master, um, like I said in previous video, I'm using my uh, Schneider Electric Link 150 to convert RS45 to Modbus TCP IP. <clears throat> and while this device is reliable, it's not necessary. It's not cheap either. There are other uh, variants of uh, serial to TCP converters out there. I just happen to have this one, so I am... Uh, using it because I am also reading the Modbus signals in my uh, Schneider Electric M340 P1000 PLC. So you have your Modbus pawn. Now of course I am connecting to my Link 150 which is on the TCP IP network. If you have a, let's say you have a USB RS45 module connected to your Raspberry Pi or whatever you're running, if you're running your home assistant, whatever you want to do. Um, you, of course, choose serial port and whatever import, uh, whatever port you have your USB in. But the setup, uh, this the communication setup is different, but, but the read and write definition is different. It's uh, the same. So Modbus Slave ID 2, that's my ESP8266, read holding. Now address, start address, right, 1, because I have it here, starts at 1, 
quantity 7 because I have 7 registers so if I would set this to 8 and try and read you will get illegal data address so it's very sensitive in that manner you have to be exact and this is mainly um, for testing but if you get illegal data address at least you know you have communication with it otherwise you will have communication error or gateway uh, offline and this is also very specific in the PLC program if you're planning on taking reading the Modbus signals into your PLC so I have here I have my uh, PLC program just a quick look I'm reading from the Link 150 module. It's on uh, network and my slave device number two. Um, reading in here. So I have disconnected this one now. So I'm going to connect it, and there you go. My Modbus signal is reading in here. I will share this uh, new code. Um, in a link in my description the link from the other video is also going to be updated with this new code it's not so much changed just a little fine adjustments if you want to take this code and uh, have it as an example and make it your own you're very much welcome to thank you for watching and uh, like I said if you want the video of uh, the Schneider electric unity pro configuration with Modbus and everything let me know gladly make a video that might be able to help you don't forget to like subscribe and share if this video helped you